He is the founder of the Valor Church. The Lord has blessed us to receive him. Um, he, is, he is a very unique kind of prophet. And I want you to have a very big appetite and a very big expectation. I have interacted with many prophets in my life. This is the first prophet I have met who is able to explain prophetic things to you with the Bible. He will show you why this is done. Why that? Why some people do certain things? That they are the analog realm. There is digital. In fact, I have learned so much. And I pray that this morning, God will locate you. Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, hear me, O eagles, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Another version says, and you shall succeed. I prefer that one. Because when you hear prosper, we only think about money. And then it leads us out of the path of righteousness sometimes but that word prosper there means you will be successful that is that is to say if he has given you something specific to do whether career business ministry or even a short-term assignment in one day make sure that it is successful that is what it means so at that moment when he was talking about you prospering, he's not only talking about financial prosperity. Uh -huh. So this service we will not be sharing money, but we will be sharing something that can bring money in excess. We read from Chronicles. Chronicles simply means a record of past events. So the book of Chronicles is a historical book of the reigns of certain kings of Judah. In chapter 20, we find King Jehoshaphat facing a formidable enemy alliance of Moabites, Amorites, and Milnites. These are three different countries that came together. And they said, this Jehoshaphat guy and his Judah, they are prospering too much. God is blessing you. Prosper. Why is everything working for you? There are people and, and entities and, and institutions that are just unhappy simply because God is happy with you. Simply because you are obedient to God and you are not dabbling in the things they are dabbling in. Why are you not like us? Anytime we see you, you, you make us feel guilty of the nonsense we are doing. For us not to feel that we are being not obedient to God, you have to also become disobedient like us. He decided to keep all the statutes of God. He was humble. He was not following after other gods. You know, every other thing was in life. There's a covenant speaking for you on the premise of the Phoenix words of Christ. We came here to invoke it to work on your behalf. What made Jehoshaphat say this? He had consistently followed the voice of God through the prophets over time. And he had seen the salvation of the Lord. He understood how any time God comes to part, things turn around for his people. And so this verse is a verse that emphasizes on reliance. Absolute total reliance on who God is, his capacity. But also, he says, not only that, I have it all. I am willing to give you. That is God. So God has the ability to do whatever we ask for. And he is willing to do it. And that is, should be the position of the heart of every Christian who is in the New Testament. There is something I need. There is something I need to pay for what I need. But somebody has paid for it already. So as I'm walking into that supermarket, I should just pick things and leave. I came to shift your thinking from a place of asking God, give me this, God give me that. No, tonight, this morning, the prayer, we will not pray to God. There are two types of prayer. First type of prayer is prayer to God. We do that in the closet. We commune with him. He gives us encounters, revelation. Then when we come out to pray, we are coming to speak to situations. That is prayer from God. So as I'm coming to, I am coming to heal you. I am not asking God that God please heal this person. I said, I am healing you in the name of Jesus. And I'm telling the disease to disappear. Jehoshaphat, when he was faced with that situation, he did not only run to God. He also sought counsel from the people. Every wise leader, wise king, 
wise family leader seeks counsel from people that matter that think that they can have a great input to the situation. Jehoshaphat is a kind of a leader or chief or person who is ready to listen. After God has spoken to him, the people he's leading, they are not stupid people. It is by privilege. For instance, look at all the great people got there. Now I'm the one talking. Do you think I'm better than you? No. We could meet somewhere else and you'll be the one talking there. In another meeting. Functions, purpose. So Jehoshaphat knew that eh, he had to seek the counsel of the people. Because after God has spoken to him, he implement that and eh, is with the people. And he's not the only one God can speak to. Jehoshaphat did all of this. That's okay. We have to go and wait. Let's, let's go and pray. While they were praying, a random man started speaking. Called Ahaziah. That man had never been a known prophet. He had never been a known prophet. So, at that moment, God used him as a prophet to speak to the nation. And Jehoshaphat recognized it. Some of us said, you know the theme of this program is let the prophet speak. Imagine when he wanted to talk, he said, ah, now when he be that keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet. Ah, ah has he anyone want to call fool? He not want to call fool. Very new But you know, they allowed him to speak. Can I speak to you? When we say let the prophet speak, we are saying that allow the prophet you know to speak because it's a definite statement. There is a definite article. The prophet, it means the one you know, the one that has been given to you. Jeremiah 3 15 says that I will give you pastors after my own heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So God chooses prophets for you. Anytime a man of God declares the written word, he's prophesying. It's re echoing what has been written. It's not only those who come and mention all the names of your family people. Because that one is revelatory. It's just to get your attention. No, that's no prophecy. Those, because some of us, I'll just come to you, I'll look at your face and just smile and go, you never know that prophesied. Jehoshaphat started speaking. He said, Ah, then my people, believe God so that you can be established. Now, let us believe his prophets so that we will succeed. And informant kept coming over. They kept coming. But Joseph, the young people put me up. when we went to farm it, we saw some armies about 100,000 people. Then this informant comes. Ah, Joseph, sometimes eh, there are certain things people can keep telling us that kills our souls, kills our faith. You don't listen to everything. The moment you listen, if your faith is there, a bunny tissue to say hammer and nail. Hi, enter. Come on, why are you putting your head up? Enter. That's where you belong. Don't choke your head up. Don't. You don't have that right. Stay down. Do you know why? That word is engineered to open the access gates of, of vulnerability in you. Because when you are built up in faith, God puts gates to vulnerability points to prevent you from being vulnerable to the enemy. This morning, I came with a simple word for you. That absolute trust and reliance on what God has said is enough to take you through the whole wahala. Absolute. It should be absolute. And then like, oh, okay, I believe this part. God said that. Okay, let me just try to help this way. You know, God, help me to, you know, let me just. No, 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 no. Except he has not spoken. When God has spoken, you know that he has spoken. Eh? This morning, I'll speak to you and God also speak through me to you. I want you to walk with the word. Walk in the capacity of the word. Walk in the capacity of the word. You will see results. While the role of prophets is crucial, it is equally important to distinguish between true prophets and false prophets. Every general prophet upholds the principles of love, humility, and truth. There is no way you will plant corn and reap cassava. The spirit that is resident in you, you will bear the fruit of that spirit. Who told you that you have the Holy Spirit and bear the fruit of evil spirits? That is not possible. Any malicious person who is a master tactician in line is not a prophet for you. Do not take their words. Number two, humility. I did not say timidity. I said humility. I'm talking about people whose shoulders are there, but their real status is here. And the principles of Christ is love and humility. That's what he brought. So, anytime the spirit of prophecy is at work, Jesus is being advertised. So, 
the revelation of the character of God is the preaching of Christ. Any environment of the prophetic, these are the three things you see. Love, like love, or do you your heart you are not afraid. We are not afraid to be exploited. We are not afraid to be used and dumped. We are not afraid to be hyped and rode over and over. Asamba wintaya e yo wo asamkra wutia eti sani yeshin su yuna goes. Yes. You see compassion. Anytime Jesus healed us, he said he had compassion on them and he healed them. It is that spirit that is at work. How can you not be compassionate to the people you are you are sent to see? How can you be so reckless? Do you know why? So that because you the recipient of the prophetic ministry, if you don't understand it, you, you will not know who is talking and who is not talking, who is sent and who is not sent to you. The principles or the sign of false prophets, number one, they distort divine message. The moment I can just take any scripture and interpret it on my behalf to make you do something for me. Another sign of false prophets is manipulation to cause harm. The moment I come and I call you, I tell you something that we hear your baby phone and help. Then I call your wife. Who could your baby bone some? That's the work of a false prophet. False prophets are easy to know. There's arrogance. I did not say character challenge. They are vessels. They can have character challenge. They can even fornicate. That's not what I'm saying. I said that there is permanent arrogance. I did not say they will fall. A Christian is the one who falls. They don't know how to say sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Human beings can be wrong. Arrogance is here. Every scripture and its interpretation is aimed at making them big before you. Bigger than God. That is another sign. There's strong insistence on doing whatever they say. You have to do what I'm saying. Listen to me. When I come to you and I say, that say the law. Eh? It is not my word. Whether you obey or disobey, it no concern me. No be me talker. So I'm not saying that prophets will not make mistakes. I'm not saying that prophets are humanly perfect. No. In fact, they are the most vulnerable people to sin. Yes. Because because so they have got issues real prophet they have got issues but this is different from what I'm saying there is this permanent lifestyle of immorality permanent do you, do you understand permanent so when I come and I say that say yes the Lord and you disobey you are not disobeying me so that be angry oh me me come and say no one to you and any prophet it is not God. Hey, why should I be angry on behalf of God? Why? I'm inheriting God's enemy. Or whatever. No. No, sir. No. And when I am to tell you a counsel based on what I'm seeing, I have to be suggestive, not instructive. That's why on Friday night, the lady, I told her, I said, look, can you do this? Please, when I'm prophesying to you, listen to my words very well. I did not say, go and do this. I said, can you? The reason I'm saying that because I have seen that, that is what will help you. So I'm giving you counsel based on what I've seen spiritually. As a prophet, I have that authority to speak. Based on what I'm seeing, I can give you counsel. Counsel, not instruction. But it is my duty to tell you, say, this direction, what is your vision? What is your purpose? What is your plan? Choose one of the ways. Even God said that I have led before you. He said, if I were you, I would choose life. Even God did not say choose life. Who am I to insist? Any prophet God has sent to you who will never insist. When, when the widow at thereafter, I say, Give me to eat. But do you know that if the woman has said no, he will leave. 
If you give me your last food that you will no more die. But if you want to die, why should I kill myself? But I believe that we are blessed. Let me tell you that to discern the spirit of prophecy of prophets, there's a statement I wrote in the book which I'm still writing that the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Because a spirit is a culture, it's a way of doing things. So there is the spirit of uh, eagles, E and I. There's a way you do your things. It is your spirit. It, is, it does not mean that God's spirit is not here. That one is a formative means unique to you. How you do your things is a spirit. Continuous testifying of Jesus, his fulfillment of all the Old Testament prophets, and also being the foundation of all future prophecies is the spirit of prophecy. So ultimately, every prophecy should point towards Christ. Are you getting me? Ultimately, every prophecy should point toward Christ. If not, the Bible said that if a prophet speaks to you and it comes to pass, and he says that let's go and follow this other gods, I didn't send him. So it's not only about coming to pass. Because let me tell you something. God is a spirit. Including the idols in the villages. Nedi is for him. He made them. They are for him. So they have his nature. So the way they talk, God talks to people. They can also talk to people. A prophet is simply a messenger. In key, it's an angel. Buffo. I can see two buffo. I say, you have to be a man. When a prophet says he's an angel, don't fight him. This morning, I am the angel sent to you. See me as one. Let me speak to you. God created spirits, several spirits. Then he took some of them to be messengers. So it's not as if they are different from other spirits. But I said, Mum, what you man is saying? What you man is saying? Yes, so mum, what is some copper? What is some copper? And no one. And they are messengers. They are messengers. They are so I'm not back. Maybe become one. I'll be responsible for that one. I should be responsible for that one which I said on my own. That is why when I'm giving you counsel, based on what I've seen spiritually, I tell you that this is what I'm seeing. Can you do this? Can you do that? I'm suggesting. Because maybe a whole, an okra now open. If it is not the way of God, that God will speak. So you see, in the Old Testament times, eh, don't sit here too. Sometimes eh, they stone prophets and kill them because they fear them. Do you know why? Not only do they speak on behalf of God. When you speak on behalf of an authority, you also command a certain level of authority. And that is true. Say, see, I met me can be a bear when I'm in a guy. That's a woman. That is when he said that you receive a prophet of God. And reward can either be a punishment or a blessing. 